And finally, the filed file. Uh, Come on. You okay? Yeah, I just gotta get this episode out so I can get back to research. Not that I'm even supposed to be here being my birthday. Uh, my throat's kind of killing me, though. Mind if I take five? You're good, boss. <laughs> I am not your boss, Sigbert. I just write and talk. You think they would actually hire a goblinoid as a teacher? We're Goblin University. Yeah, I'm a glorified mascot, and you run the camera. Rectar. Sometimes fitness substitute, usually maintenance, and always an orc. Wait, did you think he was like a dire goblin or something? Thin tactics. Okay, fair. The tactics teacher is a hobgoblin, and they immediately change the curriculum to that Mordenkainen multiverse garbage. Apparently hobgoblins are happy baybards of empathy. Except for a few heroes who were corrupted when they stayed to fight the god killer while the rest of us fled and hid and cried. What the hell? I'm telling ya, the goblin thing's just something the boss came up with to slip goblin you jokes by the archmage. Stabbing the monsters from goblin you. How am I doing it first? That's a bit harsh. <laughs> Harsh? You don't know how I got here, do you? Hold on, we'll do it like we did with Amelia's backstory. Okay, you know how it is when you get magic as a goblin, right? Respect. Exactly. Especially when you make magic that gives other people magic. Self-made through personal discoveries and trial and error. Something I was proud of. We knew we were safe when I could make five drunk goblins sound like a whole war band. And who doesn't love a good explosion? Oh, that campfire used to erupt in cheers when I'd walk by. But then, let's just say I got a little too into transformations and mutagens for the liking. It's not even my favorite school, but their attitude changed like inquisitors finding out their beloved busty barmaid is the wrong religion. I got out quick. I tried learning where I could, eavesdropping on mages and even meeting up with my familiar squiggles, but I had to keep running. The world isn't exactly kind to little goblins like me. I eventually figured out how to homebrew and got by peddling modified monsters, until I found it. The great arc wizard Cornelius Archibald the Verdant was opening a school with his apprentice, and named Goblin University. They had to accept me. Chance of a lifetime. You ever actually meet the guy? No, just the notes we got. Finest of his age millennia ago, but now you're lucky to get two minutes out of him before he stiffens up like his memory reset. Jumps right back to, hello, I'm a wizard. But that apprentice of his, Nupal the Amethyst, damn wizards and their titles, she is crafty. Mark my words, she's actually running this place. She's not writing down his orders, she's forging them. And we're the only ones vaguely safe because we're auxiliary. We're just some weirdos working out of abandoned classrooms and storage we're not worth keeping up with. That's the only reason I can get away with me. And we're back to conspiracy. But it's true. She took one look at me and immediately knew that I had potential and nowhere to go and could be paid nothing. Thing. And she's right. I tinker with course material, smile for the camera, and release the videos. Lately I've been able to show off my own ideas too, but credit's not going to the Goblin Witch. I'm not even getting paid. I get by on tips from students and work in the campus copy shop. At least I can add in my asides after the credits. Boss never watches that far. Still teaching. What? I never thought about it that way. I guess I am still teaching. It's a janky homebrew kind of way, but I've always preferred that anyway. They only ever see me unless Guck pops through another vent. Wait, what? Yeah, I've never asked him to show up or even told him where we're filming. He just kind of wanders in and I roll with it. Best to work around him and always assume he's behind you. But you're right, everyone else Goblin you is just a name. Just a fantasy on one of those dorky channels that give themselves lore. Can you even imagine making a giant web of lore that no one will ever see? Just letting it simmer in your head because you know that it's not gonna matter to anybody else. Like being a game master, only at least they can justify it as prep for if the party goes off the rails. Still, that's really comforting. And if our subs keep growing like this, we'll have power of our own before she knows to fight back. Thanks, Siggy. You're a good friend. You know, if you ever want to give this a try, I could hold the camera. <sighs> okay. Wait, is that thing on? Son! <laughs> Watch yourself, bugbear. We're going back to my home turf soon. Fine. You want an interview that bad? No, no, no. You don't turn that off. I'm professional. I'm always ready. Let's go. My name's Phoebe. Goblin. Two foot six and far faster than I look. Goblins in nearly every world are fully grown by eight. We age at about double the speed of a human, so 13 for me is 26 for you. The exception being Mordenkainen's recent 5B agenda. He's convinced that goblins age at a human rate, and we should all trust the wisdom of someone who thought a few dozen commoners could be the vampire lord. I'm a brew-happy witch with a special interest in monsters, ancient lore, and basically just stories in general. I love knowledge. Weird for a goblin, but for me it's just learning about more things to tinker with. And I love tinkering, especially with weird components. I might seem chill on the channel, but when I work my goblin magic, I go full cackling wild. I like food magic, 
magic, it's how I learned. And my potions are as likely to look like a recipe as a brew. I don't get why people draw a line between hippocampus tears and provolone. It's all ingredients. As long as it helps this outcast witchcraft, it's fine by me. This is a tired facade over a pressurized boil of chaos that's constantly destroying audio. In 5e terms, I'm an alchemist. In my original Pathfinder form, I'm a witch alchemist with a miniature flail snail familiar named Squiggles. I would describe myself as sassy, but I've also been called harsh, rude, and a judgmental bitch. I'm not gonna deny it, but I talk about people for a living, reducing common trends into something usable for adventurers. I'm well aware that the tendencies of a culture or species aren't universal. I'm a goblin at a magic school. I just think it's good to have an idea of what you're facing when your life is on the line. But recently I realized I'm kinda like a mashup of Goombella and Vivian from the Thousand Year Door, and it's kinda messing with me. Anyway, I think that's it. Anything else you wanna know? Is it ruining your birthday? Kinda. At least feels like I was unleashed on the world around now. You mean that world simulation conspiracy again? First of all, it's not a simulation, it's an eternal hydra of collaborative fanfiction by an endlessly changing collective with a weird focus on amateur sage play, Sigbert. And also, no, we just didn't celebrate that growing up. Every whelp gets chucked into the communal child pit and fed occasionally. You count as people when you can climb out. We didn't exactly have calendars, but I think it was around now. But of course, not knowing the exact date got my time off request denied, so I asked for an extra week of Pathfinder research instead. It's break enough, and I'll slip in a few days of me time. But if you want to help me celebrate with some new equipment or a birthday dinner, you can always send a dollar or two to my coffee. Link in the description, every dollar adds up. Don't turn this into an ad. Fine, then you can take me for a drink. What? Thanks for indulging my backstory story and channel lore. I guess my birthday gift for myself is just making you cringe. The new Druid episode's already written, so it should be good for next week. After that, I'm gonna leap for a couple weeks to hardcore study Pathfinder, because I really wanted to start on that stuff, but I don't like teaching without knowing, so I'm gonna learn. See you next week. Bye!